What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. I got some time here and uh, I want to share with you guys my water box up here. I got some CPDs in here. Celestial Pearl Daniel. Um, Rasbora fish. I've seen them called as well. CPDs. So I picked these guys up like a month ago and they were all like juveniles and I watched them kind of color up really nice and everything and I watched a whole bunch of videos on how to breed them and I ended up removing the driftwood out of this tank and doing this entire setup right here with the subwasser tang and this contraption right here so the CPDs in the morning they go in like that guy right there goes in and then he gets his female in there and they start spawning all of the eggs drop through on the bottom right here and at first I didn't know what the eggs look like I thought um, it was just like little sand particles from um, me setting these pebbles right here on top of the screen but uh, I didn't I didn't know what to think of it but after a couple of days, I started noticing a bunch of little fry in here. You guys can see that. Oh no, it's not focusing. They're so small that iPhone is having a hard time focusing. Let me see. But you see them in there. They're like wiggling and swimming around. But I wanted to do a quick video to kind of show you guys how I put this together. Um, it's all simple, off the shelf uh, products, like two of them. One is a Penplex uh, breeder box, and then the other one is a Fluval hang on the back breeder box. Combine those two, you get this contraption. Uh, the tank right now, I'm having it just kind of bare because I want to have them, the CPDs, laying eggs in here and nowhere else in the tank. So this tank is just purely for breeding right now. And up top, I have a, a zebra, zebra Daniels. here for a while now and some of them were pretty fat and I thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of do a similar setup to the CPDs over here do a similar setup so I could show you guys what I did step by step so hang on all right I have the Fluval back then it was a marina breeder box I got this a while back, I'm just reusing it and price on these kind of went up. I checked Amazon, back then I bought it for $12 and I, I bought a bunch actually to grow out some uh, koi fry. Now these are like going for 18 bucks and then this thing I picked up for also around 18 bucks but then if you shop around I think you could find it for $16. Second part, so right here, open up. You see right here is a breeder box. <laughs> You're supposed to trap your fish in here and they breed and then it's air driven to force the fry into this tube and then into this collection cup so they can like kind of separate everything out. But I really think it's too small to <coughs> To put your fish in there like that i think oh it'll, it'll stress out but if you can time it maybe it would work out but all we're using is this part right here i'm not even using the lid i'm just after the the funnel right here and the air driven piece right here so let's get it out and let me show you this is out the box right here everything is just crammed up and it's taped up inside Okay, these are the pieces that we're after, including this uh, tube right here. But uh, the funnel right here, 
the container and this part right here you want to attach it to the side with this I got some of this uh, this mesh got off I got it off of Amazon but you could find it in uh, Walmart as well we're gonna just simply put it over the funnel right here and then cut it to size let me put this down uh, I'll get a I'll get cutting right now all right off camera I cut everything to size and on the last one I snipped the corners right here just to get a good fit all right you see corners snipped and then you see how everything is uh, lining up right here it's just perfect no half uh, squares or anything like that for me I did not glue anything down I just simply placed this mesh on top and then a couple of pebbles to keep it down and then I put in the subwasser tang right on top of it and it worked fine for me I didn't seal any of the holes either you can if you want to make sure a hundred percent of your fry make it through but I, I didn't do that at all I just don't want to wait for it to cure and things like that but let's get this on so you slide it into the the grooves right here it's gonna look like that we'll get this hose on it's gonna look like that with the hose on the bottom so now you want to attach this um, this device with this device right here and what you do is you get a, a half inch hose this I got this from the canister filter the Eheim canister filter is just leftover hose I don't need too much but you're gonna attach this hose to this part right here and then onto the tube all right I got a piece of the tube on right here these two pieces are coming from the fluval this little pipe and then this little bend you can get this onto the tube I got it on like that I used a little heat to get this part on but I feel like I could have forced it on but it really helps to get it more um, malleable but this this side got on perfectly fine We'll slide this in that and then you can adjust it up and down to your liking. All right, this is how we're looking so far. Let's get it into the tank. Uh, we'll get the, the fluvo box in first and then we'll see how far we want to put this um, depth wise. You can see right here, it's coming along pretty good didn't take too much time either like 10 minutes all right full ball is in you gotta adjust these little uh, tabs right here to make sure you got a, a slight angle that way the water is directed back into the tank as you can see right now it's angled back like that we're gonna try another side of this uh, little this is a little tab we'll try another side to get it angled right here you can see it's angled okay so we'll get the other piece in but let me show you what I use for the air this is what I'm using it's like a little one watt pump enough for the breeder box but uh, check this out Get this in here and then we'll get this into the tank all right I got the penplex box in and it's connected to the fluvo breeder box right here uh, the air is right here we can leave this as is but I want it like 
flush with the tank. They did provide some brackets. Uh, let me see if they would reach in here. If they don't, I'm gonna do the same hack that I did with the other one. I used some magnets to kind of pressure it against the glass right here. All right, I got the the, the pin plaques breeder blocks breeder box right against the glass right here. I'm using ceramic magnets. Should be okay. Uh, don't be too concerned with the ceramic. It's the same material as the propellers in your filters right here. So I got this all situated. I'm gonna get this mesh in place. And I got a handful of uh, pebbles right here to hold it down. Let me get it in right now. All right, the screen is in. All I gotta do now is find my plant of choice. I'm thinking about using some Hornsworth. So I got some uh, laying around and it's good at uh, removing a lot of the nitrates and everything like that. Um, I'll weight it down with one of the plant weights that came with the plants that I bought with and then We'll let these guys breed. They're already checking it out and not scared or anything like that. But we'll turn on the pump right here and let the water fill up. And up top right here, I don't have the little screen, but I'm going to use a coarse sponge to kind of screen that to uh, keep the fry in place. All right, we got air in. Sucking. So the eggs fall through, they could stay in here, turn into fry, but most of the time eggs and fry would get stuck through this hole right here, goes through this tube, the bubbles right here is causing the suction, and they'll take a ride up the tube, and then into the breeder box where everything is collected. They'll be safe in there from, um, the Daniels, the zebra Daniels from eating them. And then up here, we can power feed them uh, live foods and things like that to like get them up to size. And then once they're up to size, we'll get them into a breeder tank and we'll keep the cycle going like that. So down here, I got some horns or uh, plants. Does the Wasser tanks working for me so far? But I want to try this just to see what happens. I have this from, uh, it came with the plants I bought in the past. I think it's aluminum, some uh, bendable aluminum strips right here. I'm just gonna wrap it around this and then to get it weighted down and everything. like that and then we'll put it into the into the breeder box and hopefully the zebra daniels would come in here and try to breed in this uh, lush green plant right here and before you know it hopefully we'll get some eggs and then some fries and then we'll get the whole breeding setup going let me get this in the tank you can see even without the the plants in there the fish are very curious and they're like exploring inside and out of it but they're like very ferocious eaters I've been feeding them um, mosquito larvae for like two weeks now to kind of condition them up so hopefully I'll get these plants in right here the water is slowly filling up the breeder box I'll top this off and then Hopefully by next week, I'll have an update for you guys. Let me get this in. All right, the plants are in. It naturally wants to float up. I'm pretty sure I have to trim this every now and then, but see, they're already in there. Hopefully we'll see some eggs down here, but I'll be sure to keep you guys updated and everything. You guys like the video so far, please give a thumbs up and let me know if, if you have any questions, but we'll do another uh, kind of overview because uh, I had a friend that's like confused at how this whole thing is set up. So 
fish, they like this lush stuff and they want to spawn in there. So they'll start spawning in there. The eggs would fall through this mesh right here. Uh, it prevents the fish from robbing their own eggs, kind of turning around and eating their own eggs. All the eggs fall through. They get collected down here. There's an opening and water is constantly being pulled through there with the the aeration from this night crew bubbler. You see the bubbles go up, but then when it's going up, it's pulling all of this water down here up into this tube and then whatever's caught in that current is going to get pulled up. It gets pulled all the way up this pipe and then they get dumped into this container right here. The container would give you an opportunity to kind of observe what you got in there and how they're doing. But most importantly, it gives you the option to separate the fry away from the parents right here where they would eat up the fry if given the chance. It would be separated in here and you would have a chance to kind of monitor and power feed your fish. And what's good about this breeder box is that you don't have to worry about the filtration because it's using the same filtration as the entire tank. Parameters in this breeder box is the same as the entire tank. And I usually put one ram's horn snail in here. So when you're feeding all of the excess food that's not eaten by the fry is eaten by the by the snail and you just kind of monitor what I'm planning to do is kind of monitor and let the fry grow to size and once they're big enough I'll put them into uh, a bigger breeder tank and then the cycle keeps going and going and there's very little attention that you need to put into it every day you don't need to look after the eggs or like collect hand collect the eggs and things like that all of the eggs are automatically sucked up into this breeder box and then you get to grow out the fry that way i think it's a very easy process to breed these uh daniel fish you see they're all plump right there i'm hoping those just start breeding soon but anyways guys let me know if you have any questions and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Also, I'll have a link for all of, for everything that I use in the description down below. So don't worry. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye.